Well, but somebody not ready for that. And so what I've been doing in the last, you know, I don't know how many, how long I've been doing this. But right now, I'm just, I'm revisiting. Somebody say she revisiting. I'm rereading. Somebody say she rereading. She rethinking. She's restudying. Re she's reconsidering. She got her third eye open. Woo, somebody don't like that. And now she can see the things that were right in front of her. But because her third eye wasn't open, she couldn't see nothing. She was blind as a bat preaching. All right. And so I'm inviting some to revisit with me, to get on this journey with me. If you don't want to. Hit the road, Jack. Don't you come back no more, no more, no more, no more. Exactly, Kobe. Re means again. I'm doing everything again. Okay. If that ain't what you want to do, listen. Go do whatever makes you feel wonderful. Okay. But I was born to do this. So let's talk about hell. Let's talk about, I mean, let's talk about hell, baby. I need everybody to type in the comments. Let's talk about hell. Because it is the one thing that I believe has caused not only confusion in the church, but it has caused delusion in the church. Oh, oh, let me, let me, let me sip this fresh pressed apple juice. Now, I, I did a duet with Andre, uh, Darcel, Andre, and, and my God, <laughs> the church folks came for me on my page. Oh, my God. <laughs> they are in a firestorm. I almost deleted it last night because it was getting to be a little bit too much, but I said, hell no, no pun intended. I ain't deleting it. So you can keep on, you can keep on commenting and posting. You just boosting the algorithm and bringing me more traffic. I gained 200 followers yesterday in one day because of that. So I ain't deleting it. Okay. But I'll, I'll ignore stupidity. So I got notes y'all. All right. So this, this, I need, a, I need, a, I need a few minutes to go through my notes. That was a powerful duet for real. Go look at it. Uh, Kobe, I posted it yesterday. Because Andre Darcel just got a way to, he, he can say stuff in a way that I can't do it. Like he, <laughs> woo, that's, that's my, that's my child. I think, I think he was my son in another lifetime for real. I just think he was, I don't know. But anyway, go look at the duet. It's powerful. And then go look at the one that he did. He heard me talk about hell on my live stream Monday. And he gave me credit for his thoughts. And I thought that was really sweet because some of y'all be stealing stuff and don't give people credit for what you got your information from. But he was willing to give his information, give me credit for him getting the information from my, from my live stream on Monday. But his presentation is just so, ugh. you know, I'm more of the kind of studious, let's just teach kind of, but he will, oh, he'll pop it off. You hear me? He's excellent. All right. I'm getting ready to do a podcast with him too. That's going to be. Y'all stay tuned. Y'all stay tuned. We were texting just before I got on here. Y'all just stay tuned. We about to do a podcast, a podcast together. If I was in the church, I would say I need the saints praying. <laughs> All right. So let's go into the notes. Okay. Y'all share this. I don't, I didn't see enough people sharing this. Oh, King Boston's trolls is heavy. You hear me? Kobe. King Boston's trolls. I thought my trolls was heavy. King Boston, she followed me yesterday. I'm so honored. She followed me and we messaged each other. King Boston's trolls is off the hook. But y'all share this for me, okay? All right. So let's talk about hell. Now, before I get into hell, let me just give you a couple of things to think about. All right? If you read, well, some of y'all... <laughs> If you do read the Bible, some of y'all probably don't read it, but tell your friends this, tell your, tell your pastor, tell the people at the church. One of the worst translations of the Bible that you could ever read is the KJV. Thank y'all for sharing. Gabe, Alicia, uh, Amity, thank you for sharing. Yeah, I love that he mentioned that. That was sweet. Thank y'all for sharing. I appreciate that. Relin, thank you for sharing. They have no common sense. They don't want to think about nothing. All right. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to ignore the trolls y'all. So if y'all see the trolls, y'all get them for me. Okay. Cause all the people that's talking about you hurt. I, I can't, it's the ignorance for me. Let's just focus. 
All right. So it, what I want you to do, even those of you who have left religion, blow the dust off your Bible. But I need you to find an NASB Bible. That's the closest one to the actual translations. And even that ain't, and even that ain't perfect. But the King James Version is, is a very contaminated Bible. It is filled with agendas. Somebody type in the comment section, N-A-S-B. That's the best one. Now, in the N-A-S-B, which is the new, uh, what is it? I can't remember what it stands for. Something, something, new, something, standard Bible. I forget what the A stands for. But anyway, the N-A-S-B. In that N-A-S-B Bible, they mentioned the word hell 13 times. Th 13 times. Somebody say 13 times, please. 13 times. Thank you, American. Thank you, American. That's what it stands for. Thank y'all. New American Standard Bible. Yes, thank you. Y'all so smart. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Y'all help me out. We in this together, y'all. We doing this together, okay? King James, with his mean self, uh, uses the word hell 54 times, all right? Hell, uh, heaven is used 644 times. Heaven is used 644 times. Hell is only used 13 times. The word law is used 400 and I'm sorry, 599 times. I'm just giving you some context first. Because if hell is this detrimental place where 85% of the population is projected to go, I would think that the word would be used more often. I don't know. Maybe something just wrong with me. Let's keep let's keep it trucking. Let's keep it trucking. Let's keep it trucking. All right. Now, the word hell is actually not in the Bible. <laughs> Remember, what you are reading are translated words. Can somebody type that for me, please? What you're reading is translated words. I'm going to give you the four words. Somebody said, you better teach pastor. Y'all making me blush. Y'all making me blush. Y'all making me blush. I'm going to give you the four words that are translated to mean hell. All right. Remember, Old Testament, they were speaking Hebrew. New Testament, they're speaking Greek. Or and that's the translation. I'll put it that way. Jesus didn't speak either one because Jesus spoke Aramaic. You got to remember that. Okay. All right. So here's the four words. I want y'all to write these down. These are the four words translated as hell in the Bible. One of them is Hebrew. Three of them are Greek. Y'all ready? Let's go. Word number one is the Hebrew word and it's Sheol. Type it in the comments for me. I need to know that y'all are with me, that I'm not by myself. Sheol, S-H-E-O-L. That's a Hebrew word. Sheol. It's in the Old Testament only. Sheol. Y'all ready? Thank you. Thank you. Word number two. Word number two, y'all ready? Hades, H-A-D-E-S. Hades. H-A-D-E-S. That's in the Greek, and it means the exact same thing as Sheol, which I'll get to in just a second. Hades is the second word that the Bible translates as hell. Are y'all ready for number three? Number three, Tartarus. T-A-R. T-A-R-U-S. Sounds like Taurus a little bit. Tartarus. T-A-R-T-A-R-U-S. Who cares how it's spelled? Tartarus. That's word number three. That's a Greek word. I'm waiting to see Tartarus. There we go. Tartarus. That's word number three. That's word number three. And word number four. Are we ready? Y'all better share this. Y'all better share this with five people in your, in, your, in your contacts. Five people who need to be set free in your life, share it right now. They'll be okay. The only reason people are saying crazy stuff to me is because their brain is triggered. 
Somebody say the brain coach. Right now, your amygdala, your limbic system, which is the area of your brain that controls your emotions, is going to be triggered with some of this stuff. Because you've heard these fear-based teachings all your life. So your brain is just releasing all kinds of chemicals right now. And those chemicals are traveling down your spine, right? Right? Down your spine. And it's setting your chakra systems in a disarray. And that's where all these, these crazy folks are saying crazy things to me. But it's all good. Number four, the fourth word translated as hell is Gehenna. Somebody say Gehenna. And I need everybody, after you type it in the comments, I'm going to trust that y'all going to do this. After you type this word in the comments, I want you to just say it out loud. Gehenna. G-E-H-E-N-N-A. I need to see everybody typing this one. G-E-H-E-N-N-A. Don't worry about the spelling. Just type it. Just type it. I just want you, because something magical happens when you start formulating words. Your brain starts to become nurtured with healing energy. Just type it. We don't care how it's spelled. Just type whatever you hear, Gehenna. And I need you to promise me that you're going to say this word out loud. And once you say it out loud, type done. Gehenna. And type done. Gehenna. Somebody lives in Gahanna, Ohio. Wow. Done. When you say it, when you type it, when you say it, I need you to type done. Because we're doing this together. We're going to rewire our brain together. Because God, whatever God is to you, has not given you a spirit of fear. Somebody say, teach, queen. God has not given you a spirit of fear. And whatever makes you feel fearful, you better know today that it came from man and not the true God. And I ain't talking about this crazy God in the Bible. Oh, did she just say that? Yes, she did. Yes, she did. You have been designed for peace and love. That's it. Anything that makes you feel fearful, you better know it came from man's mind. Let's, let's continue. All right. So we got four words. So these four words have been combined together and translated to mean hell. All right. Now, Sheol is the word that means grave and or pit. Type in the comments. Sheol is grave and or pit. Hades means the exact same thing. Hades means grave and or pit. Those are the words that you're going to see in the Old Testament. Okay, so we're not going to really deal with the Old Testament today because the Old Testament is pretty, is pretty solid. Can I say this? The ancient Jews had no concept of a burning hell, which is why you're not going to find this concept in the Old Testament. And anytime you see the word... Uh, alluded to hell in the old testament like in in psalms where david talks about making his bed in hell he's talking about the grave king james because he had such a deluded mind king james and his and his canonized editors they they did a lot of uh retranslating in the old testament but in the old testament sheol and hades are talking about grave or pit the new testament is where we have most of the problem all right in the New Testament, let's talk about the word Tartarus. And I'm going to show you exactly where these words are used. So hang tight. Honey, you need a notepad and a pen. Somebody say today. You need a notepad and a pen today. Because we're about to break hell all the way down to the floor. We're about to drop it like it's hot. Okay, no pun intended with the whole hot thing. Okay. Uh, Tartarus is used one time. I'm going to tell you where in just a minute. That's the only word where there may be a little bit of fear-based ideology, but I'm going to tell you where that word came from in just a minute. Tartarus means the abyss or the deepest part of the grave. Can y'all type that for me? Tartarus just means like the abyss or the deepest part of a grave or the deepest part of the pit. And I'll tell you where that is in the Bible. And I'll tell you where that thought comes from. And I'm getting ready to whisper this next part because I don't want y'all to get mad at me. You must, uh, you, you're you going to have to accept that there is a lot of mythology in the Bible. <sighs> I 
And Tartarus is a specific example of mythology being intertwined in the Bible. Okay. All right. Gehenna is used 12 of the 13 times in the NASB Bible. And it's a literal physical place. All right. It is a, it's, it's a part of what's known as the Valley of Hinnom. Okay. Gehenna is a physical place. Somebody say a physical place. All right. And it's, it's, it's a, it's, it's known as the Valley of Hinnom, but it's a, it's a part of the Valley of Hinnom. All right. We're going to get to it. We're going we gonna to free your mind from the fear of hell. But what you got to promise me you're going to do, you got to promise me that you're going to keep studying this information. I'm going to download this video and put it on my YouTube channel. Or I don't know, I might put this just on my Patreon group for my, for my, for my people. You got to keep studying this information. The only way you're going to change the, 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 the wiring in your brain is you have to do something repetitively. So... <laughs> Can I quote the Bible real quick? Faith comes by hearing. You have to keep hearing this information to build a new faith muscle in your brain. Somebody say, teach brain, coach. Everything you've learned to do this far, you did it through repetition and habit. Somebody say, teach brain, coach. The only reason that you know how to tie your shoes today is because you started practicing tying your shoes. The only reason you know your ABCs today is because you habitually say the ABC song. The only reason you can count is because you practice counting. It became repetitious for you. How many times have you driven to work? And you just checked out mentally and you looked up and you were already there and you don't even know how you got there. You don't even remember crossing the intersection. You don't even remember when the light turned green. You don't know if you ran the light. You just know you looked up and you were at work. You know why? You know why? Because when you do a thing enough, it becomes cemented in your brain. And your brain just takes over and your brain goes into autopilot. So for many of you, myself included, this belief in hell is because your brain is on autopilot to believe it. Somebody say, teach brain, coach, teach. But thankfully, your brain is neuroplastic. And you can change the wiring in your brain to believe something different. To do something different, to learn something something different, to think something different, to believe something different. If you believe that hell is a real place where people are going to burn for eternity, if you believe that, your brain says, okay, you believe that, your brain will create a neuron specifically for that belief. And there'll be nothing that nobody can tell you to convince you otherwise. That's why I'm getting slammed on my video because those folks have a place in their brain. All right. A pathway for that belief has been cemented in their brain and they're not willing to change the pathway. But y'all are. Somebody say I'm willing. I need about 50 people to say I'm willing. All right. 13 places in the NASB, the new, what y'all said a word mean? The New American Standard Bible. It's 13 places where this word is mentioned in the NASB Bible. Remember, that's the, that's the best translation of the Bible. All right? I'm going to go through this list real fast. I want you to write these texts of scripture down real fast. And I need you to read all 13 of them before you go to bed tonight. Because we're rewiring our brain. You ready for the list? There's 13 places that you're going to find the word um, Tartarus and Gehenna in the Bible. Remember, the other two words, Sheol and Hades, we're not messing with them because we know that those words mean the grave and the pit and they're only in the Old Testament. All right. The word that's making you terrified is the word that, we got, that we're about to look at now. And it's used 12 out of the 13 times. Here we go. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. And that word is Gehenna. Thank you for sharing again, Sean. 
All right. 13 times the word hell is used to mean a place of the lake of fire. First time it's used Matthew 10, 28, and it's the word Gehenna. Y'all type this down or write this down. Matthew 18 and 9 also means Gehenna. Matthew 23, I can't remember right now, 13, Gehenna. Matthew 23 and 7, Gehenna. Mark 9 and 43, Gehenna. Mark 9 and 45, Gehenna. Luke 12, 5 and 11, Gehenna. James 3, 6 and 12, Gehenna. Reverse Bible study. I love that so much. All right. James 3, 6 and 12, Gehenna. And the one time that the word Tartarus is used is in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 13. All of you who are coming to the meeting tonight on my Zoom, I will give you these verses of scripture again. Okay. All right. If you have not sent an email to join the Zoom call tonight, send the email ASAP so I can get you the link. We're going to meet at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you need that list again, I will share it tonight in our meeting. You never got your email? Could you send me another one, please? And I'll send you the link. All the emails went out that I have. So please, 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 if you want to be in our meeting tonight, if you want to become a part of our community, I need you to just email me again and I'll get that link out to you today. Yeah, you, if you couldn't write them, don't worry. I will repeat them tonight so that you all can write them down. Okay, thank you, Divinely Spiritual. So let's start with the, with, with, with 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4 and 13, the word Tateris. This is where Greek mythology comes in. How much time we got? Y'all good? Y'all on y'all lunch break? I got to hurry up. I'm talking real fast, y'all. Let me read it to you real quick. Let me read it to you real quick. Second Peter chapter two, verse four. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. That sounds real scary, don't it? That sounds like some scary ish. Except for, in that instance, the word hell has been taken from that Greek word Tartarus. And it's mythological. And you can go look this up. Tartarus is the name of a person or a place in Greek mythology. This word that's in Second Peter was used 700 years ago. Before Christ. What? What? It was written by a poet. The poet's name is Hassad. You can go look this up online. H-A-S-A-D. All right. That was the poet's name. The name of the poem was Theogony. Right? And it means the abyss. The deepest part of the grave. So you have to understand there is a lot of, of Greek mythology that has been intertwined all up in the Bible. I can't force you to believe. I'm just giving you information. You have to go study for yourself. Something magical happens when you start to study things for yourself. All your life you have said in a church. And you've listened to your preacher or your grandma or somebody tell you what to believe. And you've not gone to do any research for yourself. You've not taken the time to challenge anything that you were taught. You just believed. And I told you what your brain does. If your brain keeps hearing recurring thoughts, it'll just accept it as real and true. Okay. That's the only time that the word Tartarus is used in the New Testament. And before I get to the word Gehenna, let me just make a pause. This is going to be powerful. Nowhere 
in the New Testament other than this one place in Peter is the word hell used. What? Vanessa. Paul the Apostle, who is supposed to be the Gentile theologian of Christianity, says absolutely nothing about hell. There is a couple of references uh, that make you think Revelation is talking about hell, but there's no mention of that. Why doesn't Paul talk about hell? And Paul's writings come before the gospel writings, even though it's not arranged that way in the Bible, but I digress. So in the Old Testament, there's no mention of hell. A burning place of torment. In the New Testament, other than this place in First uh, Second Peter, there's not a mention of the word hell. And the only place we see it is in the Gospels, mostly in Matthew, one, one or two times, in, uh, once in Mark and once in Luke. And Jesus is the only person who says it. Now, when Jesus uses this word hell in all of those places I just told you about, He's talking about a physical place called Gehenna. I need you to type that word again. Gehenna. Remember I told you to say it out loud? Because that's what's got us all in the uproar. Gehenna. Now, this is where some of y'all might get mad. Before I tell you about Gehenna, let me just say something to you. They're not going to tell you this in church on Sunday. All right. Jesus, the only time Jesus is talking allegedly in these in this Bible, he's not talking to you. And he's not talking to me. He's talking to the Jewish people of his day. Vanessa. See, we should have mind our business and we wouldn't be in this predicament today, but we didn't mind our business. He's having a conversation allegedly with the ancient Jewish people. And he's talking to them about a place that they would have understood. And the reason you don't understand it is because you're not in Jerusalem and you were not in Jerusalem 2000 years ago when all this madness was going on. All right. This is why we have no understanding of what this scripture is about. We've taken it completely out of context because we should have minded our business, but we didn't. Because in the Western world, we love to try to force ourselves on everybody else's beliefs. I'm in trouble because the Western people, the colonizers love to go into other places and steal folks spirituality. Vanessa, it's the truth. So since we invaded this spiritual system and ripped it all to hell, no pun intended, now we got to go back and try to undo, unravel the false teaching. Okay? So the Jews that Jesus was talking to in all these scriptures in Matthew 10, Matthew 18, Matthew 23, Matthew, uh, uh, Mark 9, Luke 12. In all those places, Jesus was talking to the Jews about a place called Gehenna. It was a dark, evil place where the Israelites spent a lot of time being rebellious. If y'all read the Old Testament, you would know that the Israelites were very rebellious and they used to, they used to worship cult gods or pagan gods but y'all don't ever believe me when i say this there are a pantheon of gods in the bible <laughs> y'all think it's just one but if you read the bible correctly you'll see that the jewish people worshiped many gods all right there there was one god they used to worship uh in particular where they used to sacrifice children to this God of named Molech, and they would burn these children. If you don't believe me, let's read the Bible. Second Chronicles chapter two, verse 28. Somebody put that on the, on the screen for me, because I'm going to show you where Jesus gets this, this parable from. Jesus is teaching in parables. He's teaching in parables, y'all. <laughs> Even the Bible tells you that Jesus teaches in parables. Don't y'all understand that? 
He's teaching the people in parables. <laughs> All right. So second Chronicles chapter 28, verse number three, somebody type it on the screen for me. Second Chronicles chapter 28 and verse number three. Second Chronicles chapter 28 and verse three. I need somebody to type it for me. It's probably moving slow. Look at what it says. I want you to listen. I want you to listen. Moreover, he burnt incense. Matter of fact, let me start at verse one so you get the whole story. Ahaz was 20 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 16 years in Jerusalem. But he did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord, like David, his father. We're talking about Ahaz. He walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and he made graven images for Balaam. Verse three. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valley of the son of Hinnom and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. This is just one example of, and this was a king of a Jewish king who would take children and burn them unto idol gods in this place called Shinnom. Shinnom is a part of Gehenna. Y'all following me? I, <laughs> I love that Captain Kurt. I think I'm going to have to do it. I've been resisting it. Do y'all hear me? So the valley of, the valley of, the valley of Hinnom is like the city. Gehenna is the actual place where they would go inside of the valley of Shinnom and sacrifice these children. So now Jesus is talking to the Jewish people and he's using this story because he knows if he teaches a parable about the Valley of Shinnom, that the Jewish people would know what he was talking about because their ancestors were burning people alive there. And there's a reason why Jesus is going to tell this is using this parable. So just like today, if a hundred years from now, if I was trying to teach a lesson to the people at my church, I might use COVID. As a parable, why would I use COVID? Y'all put it in the comments. Why would I use COVID? Because I know if I talk about COVID and what happened during COVID, the folks that's going to be born a hundred years from now, as people are being born onto the planet, they're going to hear about COVID. They're going to see the stories. They're going to see the internet stories. They're going to know that COVID was horrible. They'll be able to relate to what I'm saying. It's something that speaks to our time. Exactly. So Jesus is talking about this, this, this place called Gehenna because he knows that the people he's talking to in that moment could relate. We can't relate because we wasn't there, but I digress. All right. Now, what Jesus is actually telling them is that he's prophesying to them about the year 70 AD. I need everybody typing, everybody typing, everybody typing. This is why you have to study the whole Bible and you have to study other books because you're not going to get all of this by reading linear. We want to read the scriptures linear. We think everything we read happens in order. No, that is not how the Bible is arranged. Okay. So Jesus, Jesus is going to, he's preparing them for 70 AD. What was going to happen in 70 AD? The Romans, this is, this is really important. The Romans were going to invade Jerusalem and take the Jewish people hostage. They were going to kill them. And they were going to burn them at the Valley of Shinnom or Gehenna. And so what Jesus is telling these Jews is, if you want to prevent this, this takeover, you need to repent. <laughs> change your mind. Stop worshiping these idol gods and return back to your God. Because if you don't, 
the the Roman people, the Roman dynasty is going to kidnap you all, sacrifice your children, sacrifice you, burn you alive in this in in Gehenna. Now, while Jesus is telling this story and all those atrocious child sacrifices have been happening in the past, Gehenna began to be known as the forbidden place. People did not want to hang out there. And so they used it as a city dump. It, it transformed into a place where they would just burn trash. They used it to burn diseased animals. They used it to burn diseased humans. So the fire never went out. That's why the scripture says that. Worms and um, what other things come, y'all, from, from trash and death? Worms and all kind of rodents would, would, would appear. That's why the Bible says where the worm never dies, where the fire never goes out. So Jesus is making reference to this place where, yeah, flies, all that. So Jesus is referenced maggots. That's what I was thinking of. Jesus is referencing this place called Gehenna where folks are now using it. It used to be used as a child sacrificing to the God Molech. Now it's being used as a city dump where they burn trash. They burn diseased animals. They, they burn uh, diseased humans. And so this fire is always burning because they're always burning things there. I wish I had somebody. And 70 AD happened, y'all. And so a lot of folks in my video, they were like, well, you need to read the book of Revelation because the book of Revelation, let me be clear, y'all. The book of Revelation is not a prophetic book about what's to come. Vanessa Brooks, you need to stop, you heretic. The book of Revelation is not a book of prophecy about what is to come in the future. Some of y'all don't understand that prophecy also includes that which has already happened. Do not reteach my class. Get out of here, Darius. Goodbye. I've been doing real good about staying focused, y'all. Haven't I been doing good, y'all? Y'all help me to stay focused and tell Darius to leave my life. <sighs> prophecy is not just about predicting what's going to happen. Prophecy is foretelling and it's forth telling, illuminating what has already happened to bring it into your view so that you can understand it. The book of Revelation is primarily about 70 AD and those things have already occurred. Vanessa, what? It is a book of symbology. They've already occurred. You missed it. You missed it. I'm glad I missed it. I don't know about y'all. I'm glad I missed it. So please, please stop using Revelation as a book to 